What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. We've got a good one for you today. We're going to be building a classic mid-century backyard family fallout shelter, and I cannot wait to dive into it with you. Before we do, though, I just wanted to let you know I put up a poll a couple of days ago asking what kind of content you folks would like to see in the future in addition to the wonderful fallout videos you already know and love. If you haven't already voted, I would really appreciate it if you'd take a moment to do that. You'd be helping me out a ton and getting a chance to influence the future of this channel while you're at it. Just head on over to the channel page and click that little community tab to let me know what you think. And of course, if you're interested in helping to support the channel over on Patreon, you'd be my new hero and a real wasteland legend. That link is down in the description. And join us over on Instagram if you haven't already, at KikiBeePlays. We'd love to see you there. Alright, now, this build is not necessarily location-specific, but the spot I've chosen is down here near the Nuka-Cola bottling plant. If you fast travel down to the plant and then turn roughly southwest, you're going to see this lovely little house over here. If you aren't familiar with this spot, this is the home of Bob the Dabber Radroach, as he will forever be known in my headcanon and now yours. It's just this lovely little pre-war house, and I thought it would be the perfect spot to build a backyard fallout shelter. Head on inside here, you've got the dead Mr. Handy, and over here in the bathroom, we have Bob the Radroach, looking very, very dashing in his little bowler hat with his walking cane. You can loot a wedding ring off of Bob's corpse if you like. Alright, so I'm going to place my camp module out here by the corner of the house, and I didn't quite like the placement. I'm going to move it just a little bit closer to the house. I need to get part of the porch and enough space behind the back of the house into my build radius so that I can work. All right, now getting started, we're just going to place down a foundation here up against the back of the house, and you want to kind of line it up with um, the edge of the house there. Leave a little bit of space between the foundation and the porch stairs. And before you go any further, just make sure that you can put walls all around this and roofs on top, that none of that is going to be intersecting with the house. Once you've got that part done, you can take the next step. Now I'm going to go ahead and put down an extra foundation here and place my door right now. This is where I want it to be. Placing doors can sometimes be a little bit difficult. Uh, if you don't have floors on both sides, some doors will not place. Others will. Now let's throw down a staircase here. And we're going to use the old rug and terminal trick to get down under the world. Place the terminal on top of the rug, and then we're going to just pick that up by the rug, move it onto the staircase, and put it about halfway up the stairs. Now when you pick up the staircase, you want to sort of grab it by the top, so that you can force it down under the ground. And you just activate that terminal and exit out of it, and you'll be underneath the world. You all know I'm very fond of my Under the World builds. So for now, I'm just going to throw down some floors, going three stories down. Um, and I just need to be able to walk around down here and to move to do things. Now I'm going to put a couple of foundations up underneath the house. So first I'm going to attach one to the far end of those two foundations that I put, and then another one behind it. If we remove the one in between, that one lone foundation in the back is going to be hidden really, really nicely under the porch, and we're actually going to turn that into the support for our entire structure. Now I'm just putting down uh, some other stairs and floors here. And this is going to be the actual entrance down into the fallout shelter. Uh, the long staircase that we built initially is just a temporary one. So 
So that's what that's going to look like. It's going to be two staircases coming down uh, from the little structure that we built up on the surface, and then a floor and one staircase coming down from that floor. I'm going to put some floors down for now so that I have some space to work. And we're going to start constructing our support structure here. There's no real purpose to changing those to wire floors other than it made it easier for me to remember which ones I wanted to remove later on. So we're going to put a staircase coming down from that foundation piece uh, and snap a floor to it. Now we're going to be building a zigzag structure with stairs and floors coming down, but we can't quite do that directly. So we're just going to have to put a couple of spare pieces here and remove them when we're done with them. All right, so now we've got a very compact support that's going to go down three stories. And this will be what holds up our entire structure. Now I'm putting two solid floors down here underneath uh, the first set of staircases. And I'm just going to change these so that they're easier to walk around without the wide bulky railings. And I'm going to go ahead and fall through the world um, and build up some walls around this entryway. This step is pretty straightforward. If you're unable to place the wide railing staircases uh, in between the walls, that's okay. You can just place any of the other ones in that category and then change them to the staircases that you want later. All right, so now we can move our terminal over to where the actual entrance is gonna be. And again, put it about halfway up the staircase. That looks about right. And then we can get rid of that temporary scaffolding that we had built over there. And of course, because all of our floors are supported um, by the little hidden foundation structure, uh, it's really easy to remove staircases when we need to move things around, change them, whatever, as we work. So I'm just going to continue sort of filling in the rest of the entryway here. And basically I want to have um, the upper structure that you enter through on the surface and then stairs coming down into a small room where there's going to be a radiation shower. And then another vault door leading down into the actual bunker. It'll make a little more sense in a minute. So I'm just creating a little sort of sloped entryway that will come down in off of that. And putting up some of the first walls. If 
doesn't really matter too much which walls you choose down here. Um, I went with the Brotherhood walls for all the stuff that's visible. Uh, but if you don't have those really anything sturdy looking to do, you want to make sure this looks like something that would, you know, withstand a lot of crap over the years. I'm gonna stick that vault door in there and now we can place our staircase back in and with the staircase you want to sort of point the camera downward so that you're attaching the staircase to the floor on the bottom and not the floor up above. It will not let you actually attach it to the floor above because there's a wall in the way. It's kind of stupid. All right now we're just gonna start building some floors out here and I'm using different floor tiles for each room so that I can sort of um, keep better track of what needs to go where and where I need to put walls later on. Now the floor plan changed a bit as I was building and working and is probably not super clear in the video so I've actually made a little sketch of the final floor plan and posted that over on my Instagram. Uh, and I put a link to that post down in the description, so go ahead and check that out when you're done watching. Uh, I think that'll make things a little bit clearer. And we're just going to go ahead and leave this little staircase here uh, down into the void. We'll need it later. After you've got your floors done, you're going to want to go ahead and just put walls up all around the outside of the structure. Uh, put your dividing walls in between your rooms. Go ahead and double wall those and then put roofs over the entire thing. Or if you don't have any roofs that you like the look of on the underside, go ahead and just use the vault upper floors and you can connect those really easily over on our supporting structure that we've built. Okay, so now we need power. I've got a little generator room over here and I'm going to put down a big generator because I need the power for the uh, decontamination arch. And the easiest way to power this is going to be to put down one of these sticky uppy conduits. And then do one of the ones that sticks down, snap that to it. Go ahead and wire that to your generator. Now we're going to go back over to this uh, forgotten staircase to the void and we're just going to put some floors down underneath our whole structure so that we can move around easily enough. Now if we go over to that generator room you can stick a conduit right underneath on the floor there, wire it to the sticky downy bit, and then you can just go ahead and put conduits all around with a general rule of about one per room. I think I went a little overboard with them, but you get the idea. Once those are all wired up, we'll have nice invisible power all over our fallout shelter. Now over here, I need to extend some wires up a little higher into our entryway so that we can wire the decontamination shower. So I'm going to stick one right next to that doorway there. One down here on the corner and then wire those to the rest of the conduits. This is roughly what the finished wiring is going to look like. Now I'm also going to go over here and uh, put another conduit on this corner.
and stick a conduit up there about halfway up our entryway structure so that I can put a light up in the entryway because that's just nice to have. All right, um, back up here in our little landing where we're going to put the decontamination arch, uh, we're going to take one of these switched power pylons and put it in the doorway. You're going to tuck it back a little bit and check that the wall is going to cover everything but the switch once you've changed it back to a normal wall. Uh, connect it to that conduit that's on the outside of the doorway. Uh, and then hook it up to the decontamination arch. Change that wall back to a normal one and you're done. Now that we've got that done, all that's left is to furnish it, so let's take a look at the finished thing. Put some arrows out here to make it a little bit clearer where you actually need to go, because it's not super obvious with this camp. And if we open up our lovely, fancy, heavy-looking vault door, we find the terminal heading down in. And go down the stairs. Since the switch kind of blends in a bit with this wall, I wanted to put something there to make it a little more noticeable. So we can get all cleaned up before we head down into our fallout shelter. And in this little entryway, I've just put some crates and shelves and things and vending machine. Now this is loosely modeled off of Abby's bunker over in the mire, so if it looks a little familiar, that might be why. Alright, in here we've got our kitchen with everything that a family needs to survive underground. Got lots of tasty processed food on the shelves here. And heading on into our living room. Uh, I like the idea of a little office area over in the corner. And off here we've got a little bathroom with all the essentials. I did intentionally keep the furnishing somewhat sparse, because it always feels to me like sort of if you're in a hurry, you know, the bombs drop, you need to get down into the shelter, you might not have all of the tiny little comforts and, and things that you would want. Over here we've got the family's bedroom, a couple of normal twin beds for mom and dad because, you know, it's the 50s, and bunk beds for the kids. I do feel like in this sort of situation, the family would probably take a lot of things for the kids to sort of keep them happy and occupied while they're stuck down underground. So that's why there's a bit more of those type of things. Here you've got the washer and dryer and some cleaning supplies. Of course, our generator room. Some exercise equipment because that's very very important. And a workshop area with all the basic workbenches that we need. So that's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed and you've turned on notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing build video. Check out that Patreon link if you want. Join us over on Instagram at KikiBplays. And of course, don't forget to vote in that poll. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.